Welcome back to Monitors Unboxed. Over the course of the last month, I've been purposefully using my 4K 240Hz OLED monitor in a way that will cause permanent burn-in. Most people want to preserve the life of their brand new and expensive monitor. I've decided to take one for the team and do the complete opposite. I want to know how much static application use it takes to see burn-in. I'm determined to get there. It's just a question of how long. So what I've done is a simple swap of a 32-inch 4K IPS LCD for a 32-inch 4K QD OLED in my workstation setup. No other changes. That means no dark mode, no screensavers, no hiding the taskbar, no attempting to do things to prevent burn-in. A simple LCD to OLED swap using the OLED monitor in the exact same way as I was with the LCD. All the same bright white application windows and static toolbars with zero or next to zero dynamic content like video playback and certainly no gaming. I use my workstation daily for creating the videos you see on this channel and hardware unboxed, so I'm frequently researching in web browsers, writing up scripts in Microsoft Office, editing videos in Premiere, creating thumbnails in Photoshop, and so on. Across these tasks, there are crazy amounts of static stuff on screen. The Windows taskbar, toolbars and applications, icons, even just the general interface. There's also dividers between apps when using side-by-side -side apps. All of these elements are at risk of creating permanent burn in on an OLED display, especially when using the brighter and whiter light mode that Windows offers, which causes each pixel to run at a brighter level and has the potential for accelerating burn in relative to darker and dimmer modes. This is completely not how you should be using an OLED monitor, even for productivity work. I would always recommend using dark mode, minimizing the taskbar, setting a black screensaver to activate after just a few minutes of inactivity, and looking to avoid static icons where possible to prevent those elements from burning in. But for this investigation, I'm pretending that I don't know that and have swapped out my LCD for an OLED with zero changes in usage, a worst case scenario. The goal is to see how long I can use the monitor like this before I see permanent burn-in. Are we talking weeks, months, years? I want to find out. The parameters for this test are as follows. No usage or configuration changes, swapping LCD to OLED. Typical workstation productivity usage as I do daily for my job with 95% plus static app usage. 60 hours a week of typical usage equating to around 12 hours, five days a week or around eight hours a day every day. This means that within a typical month, I will be using the monitor for 250 hours, totaling around 3000 hours of static use per year. The monitor is set to 200 nits of brightness, which is the configuration I use in my office and what I used for my LCD as well. I have the monitor set to go to sleep after two hours, the same configuration I had for my LCD. I use a dark taskbar with the Windows light mode, same as with my LCD. I am not running the monitor 24 hours a day to allow the display to run its typical OLED care features like pixel refresh when it enters standby. The monitor I'm using for my workstation is the MSI MPG 321 URX, and the reason why I chose to use this specific model is it's flat, unlike the Dell AW3225QF, which with its curve would be unsuitable for my use case, and it also had slightly more height on offer from the stand, which I preferred over the ASUS PG32 UCDM. So of the three models, I basically chose the best for my use case, but realistically I probably could have used the ASUS model as well. As part of this burn-in test, the 321URX is allowed to run any and all OLED care features on the monitor side, so long as I don't find them annoying during use. I started by enabling every single OLED care feature setting in the OSD, with any sliders set to maximum protection, and then worked my way back, disabling and turning down options if they annoyed me. After a month of use, I've currently settled on the following configuration. I've got pixel shift on normal, which is only mildly distracting when it happens. In fact, I often don't notice, so this was an easy setting to keep on, and normal is the default. I've got static screen detection set to the absolute maximum protection mode. I don't find the dimming annoying, as any time I go to use the monitor, it returns to normal brightness. I've also got multi-logo detection on the minimum level, which drops brightness a bit, though I recalibrated it to 200 nits after enabling the feature, so no cheating there. 
As for taskbar and boundary detection, I found that after about 100 hours of use that these were causing a few issues. Taskbar detection created a noticeable vignette along the bottom edge of the monitor in several configurations I was using, such as using two side-by-side -side browser windows, so I opted to disable it. Boundary detection was causing similar vignetting along any edges it was noticing with a significant contrast change. So for example, if I had an app snapped to the left half of the display and I had a dark wallpaper behind it, part of the bright app window would be dimmed along the border with the darker wallpaper. That annoyed me, so I disabled it. With that configuration and allowing the monitor to run its compensation cycles as normal, after about 250 hours of heavy static content use, I've experienced no burn-in or brightness change. That's pretty much as I expected, but it's still good to confirm the monitor will not be destroyed after just a few hundred hours, which is well short of the three-year burn-in warranty period, let alone an acceptable lifespan for a $1,000 monitor. I've looked at multiple full screen patterns, including various greys and various colours, and there's not even a hint of burn in yet. It's basically as new. It'll be very interesting to see how many more months until burn in is faintly noticeable, and then how many more until the monitor is affected in day to day usage through noticeable burn in. You'll have to keep an eye on this video series to find out, at least based on my usage patterns. What I do want to do though is provide some additional thoughts on using this MSI QD OLED as a productivity monitor over the last month, and I think these thoughts will also apply to other monitors using the same panel. Firstly, text quality. As I mentioned in the review, text quality is excellent on these 4K QD OLEDs with their 140 ppi pixel density, and this is still the case after hundreds of hours of use. It isn't a situation where I just didn't notice the lower text quality to begin with. I can safely say that this is a complete non-issue for me. Text quality is very acceptable, and in most cases, I completely forgot the subpixel structure is different, even though I use it beside two 32-inch 4K IPS LCDs that use a traditional RGB stripe. The screen coding is proving slightly problematic as I use the display during the day with either sunlight or overhead office lights, so the ambient light reflectivity is noticeable. It's nice to get the grain-free clarity of a glossy panel, but if I want to open a nearby window to get some sunlight, if the sun is in the wrong position, the amount of reflections are so bad it's almost unusable, whereas the previous LG LCD monitor that I was using with the matte anti-glare coating fared much better. With that said, when I shade the monitor from direct sunlight, mirror-like reflections have been negligible, pretty much a non-issue. The 240Hz refresh rate at 4K is much better than I was expecting for productivity work. Relative to the 144Hz LCD I was using, the combination of a higher refresh rate and faster response times makes this QD OLED much nicer to use for everyday tasks. Especially when browsing the web and scrolling through text, the speed and refresh rate combination is definitely noticeable and provides a smoother, clearer experience. So it's not just gaming where you'll benefit from a 240Hz refresh rate, as my other two 4K monitors are still 144Hz LCDs, I'm getting a taste of the differences on a daily basis, and without a doubt, I prefer to use the main QD OLED for web browsing and most primary productivity work. The MSI 321URX in particular has a few annoying issues with how it runs the pixel refresh compensation cycle. The default behavior is popping up with a message every four hours, which comes with several options for action. You can either run the pixel refresh immediately, which puts the monitor into standby and means I can't do any work on it while it runs, or set a reminder for either 4 or 16 hours later. If you choose the reminder option, or just ignore the message until it goes away, the display will automatically run the compensation cycle the next time the monitor enters standby. These messages would pop up right in the middle of work every four hours as I was typically using the display for more than four hours at a time. It got to the point of being annoying, so I changed it to only display a message after 16 hours. Since then, it's been a lot less annoying. The exception being though that the 321URX after running the compensation cycle in standby always turns the monitor off rather than returning to standby. So if I turn my PC back on for work the next day, the monitor doesn't automatically wake up and I have to physically turn it on using the button. It would be much better if the pixel refresh feature in standby put the monitor back into standby once it was done so it would then wake up automatically. Just a small thing that's a bit frustrating. Aside from this, I've generally had a great time using the 321URX as a productivity monitor. It has great color quality, it's accurate, it's fast, decent resolution, packs a high refresh rate. Even though some of these features are more geared towards gaming, it also makes for a nice general use monitor provided it doesn't start burning in anytime soon. 
With that said, I don't think any particular aspect to this 4K QD OLED has been revolutionary for my workflow. Yes, it's smoother and clearer to use at times, and the viewing angles are great, but for me, it's mostly been a similar experience to using a 4K LCD of the same size. The significant benefits from a product like this, such as deep blacks and great HDR performance, just don't impact my usage very much, and HDR in particular I don't use at all, as I'm sticking with the SDR mode for productivity apps. That's not a big issue though, because the point of this exercise is to assess burn-in over a long period of time and see whether QD OLED is suitable for mixed workloads. If you want an OLED for a bit of gaming, but you use your monitor 70 to 80% of the time for desktop apps, figuring out whether it plays nicely for productivity over several months and whether that type of usage leads to burn-in is important. Anyway, you'll see regular updates about burn-in right here on Monitors Unboxed, so subscribe to get that content in your inbox. Also, I'm interested to hear your predictions on how long it will take for me to burn in my QD OLED monitor on purpose based on the usage description I've given. Leave them in the comments below, and I guess you'll get bragging rights if you're right. Anyway, that's it for this video. As I mentioned, please do subscribe to the channel to get all these burn-in updates in your feed as they come in. Also, if you want to support our channel directly, we have our Patreon and Floatplan accounts. Links are in the description below. It's a great way to support the channel directly. And if it turns out I need to buy another QD OLED monitor to replace this one once it burns in, then the best way to do that and help us out to buy things like that is to support us on Patreon or Floatplan. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.